Okay, before I get into things like statistics about global warming and uh, sources and so on, I want to go over a little something so that maybe you'd understand about things like scientific method. A uh, little bit of history, uh, there's a dude named Aristotle a long time ago, he, uh, he determined what was going on in the world around him by observation. So when he looked at a feather dropping to earth and a rock dropping to earth, the rock dropped faster. So by observation, he said heavier objects will drop faster to earth. They have a stronger attraction, attachment for earth. Then along came this dude named uh, Galileo. And he came along and he says, well, I'm not sure that's right. He could watch the feather drop and watch the rock drop. But was that the full story? It wasn't the full story. He goes up on the Leaning Tower of Pizza and uh, takes a heavy ball and a light ball of the same size and drop them off at the same time. He was conducting an experiment to test whether this was true. He was trying to avoid all things that would not make the uh, test accurate using a feather and a rock that really didn't work out well because a feather would catch air so he was removing variables by using these two balls that were the same size and would have the same effective wind resistance so he dropped these balls off and they landed at the same time so he was doing things by experiment Scientists do this all the time. This is what they do. They try to eliminate variables that could affect their outcome, and they do experiments. Experimental methods the only way to do it. So scientists usually, when they come up with an idea, and they think, well, let's see if this is true. So they come up, conduct experiments, and once they conduct their experiments, they publish. They publish in maybe a journal. Well, that journal is for everyone else to look at, and other scientists will try to duplicate that with their own experiment. It's kind of the job of one scientist when another scientist comes up with something. This other scientist is there to tell him it's wrong. That's what his kind of job is. It's not that he's being mean or anything else. He's testing this guy's theory. Does this work? under these variables and those variables, things like that. So you'll see a lot of back and forth in scientific circles. It doesn't mean they're not coming up with solutions to problems or reasons why something happened. It means they're being very vigorous in their experiments. They want to be sure this is right. So when you see things on global warming, you will always see outliers that will say, well, this isn't true, that isn't true. What you need to be concentrating on is what the majority of the people that have the knowledge here are saying. In global warming, we tend to have a lot of emphasis on people that have outlying uh, theories that don't conform with what the majority of scientists come up with and we concentrate on those that's kind of a populist sort of thing we do take weather prediction we can predict where especially these hurricanes we can predict where they're going to go with a reasonable degree of accuracy it's not perfect it never will be if it was it wouldn't be science uh, but they got pretty good tracks of where they go and you get closer and closer as it gets as the storm gets closer. Those are consensus opinions where a number of people have done the same data, use the same data, or maybe some tweaks of the same data to come up with a track for a hurricane. And you've seen them on TV. There's a bunch of little tracks that looks like a bunch of squiggly lines. And some are maybe a hundred miles away from the others. But and the storm usually comes within that area. Well, 50 years ago, we didn't have those kind of things. 100 years ago, we had no idea the stupid things were gonna come until they hit. So uh, maybe a ship at sea might see this big storm or something, 
and that was the only way we knew. So, as with all scientific endeavors, it gets better as it goes on. When you're looking at global warming, look at your sources. Be sure your sources are as good as you can get, as solid as, as we can get. There, nothing's ever totally solid. But look at the, the consensus of opinion of people that really know, because we can't tell. We can't say, well, it was really cold last winter, so global warming doesn't happen. Well, you know, that's anecdotal. It really doesn't. It doesn't tell you anything. So when you're looking at statistics, take the sources, understand scientists are not going to agree on anything until there's a lot of evidence in. Yes, that's their job. We're going to talk about ozone depletion and how that came about. I was in the industry when they were first talking about it and what has happened with that whole issue, how it went down, and the position we're in today. And I'll do that in the next video or two. Okay, that's it on this one.